Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be reading chapter 3 and 4 from A to Z Mysteries, The Orange Outlaw by Ron Roy. If you haven't watched my last video, chapter 1 and 2 on The Orange Outlaw, then please make sure to watch that video to make sure that you know what's happening right here. But let's get started on reading chapter 3 and 4 from The Orange Outlaw. Dink, Dink looked past his uncle into the study. The painting was gone. I've got to call the police, Uncle Warren said. He hurried toward the kitchen, leaving the kids standing in the hallway. Who could have taken it, Ruth Rose asked. And how, wondered Josh. The door was locked. Kids, come quickly. Dink's uncle yelled from the other end of the apartment. He ran back down the hallway and looked into the kitchen. Look at that, Uncle Warren said, pointing at the kitchen table. The tabletop was littered with orange, ju and orange juice and peels. The fruit bowl was overturned. More peels and dribbles of juice covered the floor. Yuck, it's all sticky, Josh said, backing away from the small puddle. This is terrible, Uncle Warren said, as he called the police. Guys, look, Ruth Rose was pointing to an orange peel near the balcony. The kids walked over, and Ruth Rose opened the balcony door. There is juice on the door handle, too, she said, wiping her hand on her jeans. They found more orange peels on the balcony. Guys, Guy, Guy must have been hungry, Josh observed. Dink looked down over the balcony railing. Could this be how the thief got into the apartment? He asked. How? On a hang glider? Dink, remember, we are ten stories up, remember? Uncle Warren joined them. A detective will be here soon, he said. Then he noticed the orange peels all over the balcony. Goodness! The kids started to pick up the orange peels. Leave them, Uncle Warren said. The police said not to touch anything. They walked into the living room and sat down to wait. Forrest will be devastated, Uncle Warren said. Thank goodness he had the painting insured. At least he'll get his money back. Suddenly, Roger's voice came over the small speaker next to the door. Mr. Duncan, there's a detective here to see you. Shall I send him up? Uncle Warren jumped up and ran to the door. Pressing the talk button on the speaker, he said. He said, thank you, Roger. Then he opened the door and walked into the hall. The kids sat on the sofa, staring at the front door. After a few moments, they heard the elevator door open. Dingsuckle said, this is the place. I'm Warren Duncan. Uncle Warren walked back in, follow, followed by a tall man wearing a dark suit and a tie. Kids, this is Detective Frank Costello, Dink's uncle said. The man nodded at the kids, then looked around the room. He had black eyes, dark, swept back hair, and had a nose that looked as if it had been broken. Where was the painting, Detective Costello asked. Back here, Uncle Warren said, leading him down the hall toward the study. Let's go to Roger, Ruth Rose said. Why? asked Josh. Maybe he saw someone sneaking around, she answered. Good idea, Ding said. He grabbed a pad and scribbled a note to his uncle. Okay, let's go. He and Josh followed Ruth Rose to the elevator. In the lobby, they found Roger at his desk near the front door. Through the glass, Dink could see that the block party was winding down. Going out again, Roger asked the kids. Dink shook his head. Someone stole a valuable painting from my uncle's apartment, he said. Roger jumped from his seat. A theft in our building? I can't believe it. It happened while we were at the block party, Josh said. The creep ate all the oranges, too. We were wondering if you noticed anyone strange, Ruth Rose put in. 
Roger shook his head. I was here the entire time and saw only people who live here. He said, absolutely no one else. Roger closed his eyes, then opened them slowly. I just remembered Miss Cornelius on the ninth floor called down about an hour ago. She thought so she saw someone on her balcony. I offered to go up and check, but she sh said not to bother. Is her balcony below Dink's uncle? Sorry. Ruth Rose asked. Roger nodded. All the balconies on the rear of the building are directly above or below each other. Ruth Rose looked at Dink and Josh. Then maybe she saw the thief. Chapter 4 Dink explained about the orange peels they'd found on his uncle's balcony. Roger shook his head. But how would a thief climb the building, he asked. Why don't we just go outside and take a look, Josh suggested. Maybe we'll find a clue. Kids, it's pretty late. Perhaps you should wait till tomorrow. We'll only s stay a minute, Dink said. Well, okay. Roger directed them to, the me to a metal door around the corner from the elevator. Dink slid back a long bolt and shoved the door open. They walked out into a narrow, well-lit space behind the building. It was completely enclosed except for an alley that led to the street. Next to the building, a dumpster sat in the shadows. I wonder, Ruth Rose said, staring at the dumpster. What if the thief climbed on top of that? Could he reach the first balcony? Dink stared up. The first two floors don't have balconies, he observed. Even standing on the dumpster, I don't see how the crook could have gotten up or down this way. Then he had to go through the front door, Josh said. But if Roger didn't see him, then... Just then, an angry voice came out of the darkness. What are you doing back here? This is private property. Who? Who's there? Dink asked. A figure walked out of the shadows. It was Mrs. Booker. She didn't look happy to see them. It's just us, Dink said. My uncle is Mr. Duncan. We met you at the block party earlier tonight. The woman stopped a few feet from her coat pockets. She wore a cap pulled down on over her orange hair. Why are you kids out here? She asked. There's a robbery in my uncle. Uncle's apartment, Dink said. Miss Booker nodded. I know, Roger just told me. We thought the crook might have come this way, Ruth Rose said. Yeah, Josh said, except he'd have to have wings. Miss Booker looked up the side of the building. She touched the bricks with a long finger. A few years ago, I could have climbed this no problem, she said. The kids stared at the woman. Miss Booker smiled. When I was your age, my father and mother owned a carnival. My brother did the high fire act. They were known as the flying bookers. I was a girl on the trapeze. Um, did you happen to see anyone in the alley? Alley, Dink asked. Miss Booker shook her head. The alley was blocked off. She said, blocked off? How? Ruth Rose asked. I'll show you. The kids followed Miss Booker down the alley toward the front of the building. Right here, Miss Booker said, stopping where the alley met the street. There was a trailer parked here during the, during the block party. A trailer? Dink asked, trying to remember. Just then, Roger opened the front door and leaned out. Donald, your uncle wants you and your friends to come upstairs. He said, Okay, we'll be right in, Dink said. Good night, Mrs. Booker. Maybe we'll see you tomorrow. Maybe you will, said the woman said. And then she turned and walked back down toward the dark alley. In this video, I read chapter three and four. And that is all we're going to be reading today. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and thank you for listening. In this video, I read chapter 3 and 4 from A to Z Mysteries, The Orange Outlaw by Ron Roy. I really hope you enjoyed today's video.
if you did end up enjoying today's video, then please make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell down below so that whenever I upload a video, you will get notified. If you're already subscribed, then also please make sure to hit the thumbs up button down below as well. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for listening. Bye.